So it really depends on the material that you're etching. How do you how do you control you know how much it eats away? You know, doesn't right. that just like go really quickly and then you have a hole? Or I, especially when you say you don't want to create a hole, you want only a certain depth of a channel. How how do you do that? Right. Yeah, so you control how much you're etching away by controlling the speed of that conveyor belt's movement and also the pressure at which those sprayers are hitting um, the panels with the etching. So the higher pressure is going to cause faster etching rate and a slower speed will also cause a faster etching rate because it's a longer time in the chambers before it comes out the other end. Sometimes they require a couple of passes, but that's how you would gauge whether you want to etch a hole all the way through or just a channel like you would for a bipolar plate. Okay, and just to understand, so how long does that take? Is it like, uh, you know, does it like two, three seconds and then you already have like a, a channel or, you know, are we talking minutes? Are we talking hours before you get any depth? Right, it's, it's minutes. So it really depends on the material that you're etching. So some yeah. materials etch a little bit faster than others, like stainless steel, those kind of ferric materials tend to etch a lot faster than like titanium, for example, um, or molybdenum, but it really depends on the metal. But it's more like minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And how do, you, how do you ensure that the, you know, one side isn't etched more than the other, you know? Um, just maybe this is such a basic question, but you know, looking at that process, I asked myself, that how, do you, how do you ensure the channel has the same depth everywhere? Well, yeah, so with process controls in the process, you have the ability to know like how fast you have to run the conveyor to understand how much is gonna etch. So with your etch chemistry, for example, with the ferric chloride etchant, um, when it's like a fresh new bath, it's at its strongest, so it's gonna have a much, much faster rate. So operators would know to etch at a much faster speed because that etchant is gonna be a lot stronger. And so there's a lot more of those active ions in there that are going to be oxidizing that metal surface. And so it's etching yeah. at a much faster rate. Um, and so with those process controls there is how you get an idea of roughly, okay, I understand that for stainless steel, I'm running it at this speed and it's gonna etch away about 0.5 millimeters or whatever the case is. Okay, so you have a lot of variables there. So you have to know, you know how much you yeah. run through that particular solution. So, okay, that's quite a, some, some uh, complex chemistry you need to manage there, uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's only been learned after doing it for so many years. And it's really important for the bipolar plates so that you can maintain those tight depths because you don't want to have a huge range across one panel or across one plate. Yeah. So can you say what... You know, you, we saw it on the one picture, it's called etchant. I quite like that word, mm -hmm. but what, what are those? You know, you mentioned ferro, ferrochloride, or what, what are yeah. they? So I have a couple more slides here, so um, yes. I can come back to these two. Right. But yes. so yeah. oh, here's oh, yeah. a general mm -hmm. overall chemical reaction that's happening when that material is being oxidized. So mm -hmm. the etchant is working as an oxidizing agent, basically. So that ferrochloride etchant, that's like the main component that's driving this reaction. And it combines with the metal um, ions, so that iron substrate you see in the front there. Um, and so when the etchant is oxidizing the metal surface, it dissolves that away into a soluble salt, and then it goes into basically the product, which is that um, reduced chemistry now, which is ferrous chloride now, and it's that spent etchant. So that has to continuously be moving, so you need a lot of agitation in there, which is why the sprayers really help with that, because you need a constant yeah. Um, rotation or a constant um, change in the chemistry hitting the metal surface so it continues to drive that reaction. Understood. Mm -hmm. And so like I mentioned before too, these couple slides here, um, we have the ability to etch one side if you want, both sides if you want, and you can control how much depth you want to do. So you have the ability for single side etching where you only etch one side. Um, you could do it all the way through if you wanted to potentially or just to a certain depth. And you can also do double-sided etching all the way through. So similar to that first image we saw where it had remaining material, except here they continued, they met, and you have a hole on the panel. Un understood.